This is WWSU 106.9. You are now tuned in to your right state on WWSU 106.9. Fairborn Dayton. You are listening to WWSU 106.9. Fairborn Dayton. Dayton's right choice. You're listening to your right state. You're with DJ Quest. And on the phone, I have my man, K Nitz. How are you doing today? What's going on? Not much. Uh, so where are you originally from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Originally. Originally. So are you a Dallas Cowboy fan? Uh, no, I'm a Houston, Texas fan, man. Alright. I gotta rock with the hometown, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, first off, I want to get off to your single that you just released. I want to, can you, like, go in depth to, like, where the inspiration came from with the... Um, well, the, well, the inspiration came, was started because I got the beat uh, from one of my friends, a producer out of Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, Don Dash, so shout out to him. Um, he sent me, you know, he sent me the beat, and as soon as I had the beat, I knew instantly what type of song, you know, that it was meant to be, uh, the type of vibe that I got from it. Um, so, like I said, I knew coming, because I just got back to Houston probably like a year ago from Pittsburgh, so I knew, you know, in order to make a big wave, I would have to make a song, you know what I'm saying, that that was made for the times, and at the time it was the summertime, so, um, like I said, I wanted to reach out to somebody who also had a nice movement going on in the city, so I reached out to Propane, a um, couple of members from my camp got in touch with some of his people, uh, we went up and made the record happen and shit, made magic, so. Right now, that's what we're just working on that. All right, so, um, what was, like, your true inspiration? Like, when did you know, like, this was the moment that you was going to start rapping? Um, I'd say the moment that I lost my scholarship at the University of Denver. That's the moment that I knew that I was, yeah, that's the moment that I knew that I was going to take this seriously. Because prior to this, like I said, I was at the University of Denver on a basketball scholarship, so basketball was in my, in my, you know, in my windshield. Like, that's what I was looking at. But at the same time, I was doing the music on the side, but I wasn't taking it as seriously as I am now. So when that unfortunate situation happened, you know, it caused me to, you know, I had to regather myself and, and, and get it together, and I decided to go full fledged head on with this music, so that's what I'm doing now. What was your um, position? Point guard. Point guard? So you... you know. Yeah. So, um, who's your team then? Oh, man. I'm, I'm still a Lakers fan. You know, I, I know we're looking oh, to... Man. I know we're looking... We're looking a little dilapidated right now, man. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm, I got to still ride with my team. You think he'll be coming back this season? Yeah, he coming back. He coming back. But I don't know how long he going to stay after he comes back. I give him to, like, All-Star Weekend. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, you got to get one for I, I, I give my props to Kobe. Like, he, he is, like, one of the best right now. But, like, yeah. he, he is kind of getting old. Like, you got to know when to, like, leave. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's been in the game so long. Like, it's time to pass down the torch to somebody. To yeah. Play. But I guess he's, like, still waiting for that somebody to, like, pass the torch down to. Exactly. Exactly. But, I mean, he, he personifies you know, longevity, you know, and I don't, I don't care what you do, you know, whether you're a doctor, whether you're, you know, in the NBA, NFL, or in the music industry, like, that's one thing that you want to have is longevity, because longevity, nine times out of ten, equates success, because the person who stayed in the, long, uh, in the league as long as he has, you can't, you can't have had that type of career without being somewhat successful, so, you know, that's what, that's what I just strive for, like, once I get my foot in the door, just having that longevity, you know, like a Kobe Bryant or like a Michael Jordan, you know, it's just, when you got the passion for it, it's hard to let it go. That's why Mike came back several times, you know, like he, he just couldn't let it go, so. So, um, this, I'm gonna be asking you a lot of random questions, this is one of them. What famous person would you, or like two famous person that you make a song about that you, um, inspired you in some type of form or way? Well, famous uh, people that I would make a song about. Yeah. Um, I'll probably have to say Jay Z uh, for one, because uh, you know he was big 
a big influence on, on the way that I look at music now. Uh, not only from the creative standpoint, but the business aspect as well. And uh, I guess the, the next best correlation to me would be sports. So I'll probably have to say like, you know, a Kobe Bryant or like a Michael Jordan. You know, those are the people that I grew up idolizing. And, um, you know, those are the people that kind of got me focused on knowing that, you know, in order for me to accomplish this, I have to live my life a certain way. I have to make certain choices. I have to hang out with certain people. So, you know, and, that, and that's all about becoming successful and learning how to be successful and place yourself around successful people. So, you know, I said if I would have to make a song, those would be my two right there. Do you think it's, do you think it's important for an uh, artist or somebody just to surround them with the people who are trying to establish the same goal? Um, to a certain extent, yes. But then, you know, you don't want to lose touch with your friends because, you know, not everybody is trying to be in the music industry. Not everybody is trying to be a videographer or a producer. You know, so you don't want to lose touch with, you know, people that you grew up with. But at the same time, when it comes to making business decisions, you know, and, and placing yourself in that environment, it has to be conducive to what you're trying to do. You know, so if people are going to take away from what you're doing, then nine times out of ten is best to just stay away from those people. You know, so you do got to know how to handle people. All right, so your album, um, The Detour, is coming out soon. But um, can you, like, give us a little bit of, like, what's the difference between your um, album, True, True Testimony, between the detour and what you um, that well true testimony was kind of rushed uh to be honest with you a lot of people don't know the, the history behind true testimony um there was a, a artist signed to the label prior to you know me uh joining the label or whatever and for some odd reason you know he still ways part of ways with the record label so i was kind of pushed to the forefront to you know put out a body of work because he was like in the midst of releasing the album and then he just left the label. So, you know, it, it, the pressure was put on me to kind of produce a body of work and, and expedite that process. So I wasn't able to really put everything as far as my creative process into that album. It's still, I feel like it's still a dope album for the time frame that I had. But the detour has been more of a, of a process. You know, like these songs that you'll hear on the detour is an example of what, I've been going through for the past, you know, six or seven years. It, it's just a chronolo chronological, it's in like chronological order, you know, year by year, you know, and, and each song goes by, you'll be able to relate to another step in my life that I took, you know, to ultimately get to where I'm at now. So it's just a, a, a body of work compiled of, you know, real life situations, stuff that I was going through, people that I was, you know, meeting, encountering with one on one basis. So, I mean, it's a real personal album. Okay, so um, do you think it's common now that some artists are like, they feel like they have, to, like how you say you, the true testimony was rushed? Do you feel like um, a lot more artists are learning from like their rut when you know this project is rushed compared to their second album that they know they actually sat down and fed up with a lot of sounds and different stories? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's anything that you do, you know what I'm saying, you want to do it with care, and you want to take your time with it, you know, so I feel like, you know, that's how you get your best quality work, you know, like, when you when we were taking time tests in middle school and high school, the teacher always told you, you know, it's not about who finishes first, so don't try to be the first one finished, because nine times out of ten, that person is going to make a careless mistake, something that they were, you know, just skipped over, you know, in, in a rush, but if you take your time, double check it and triple check it, then you know at the end of the day you'll have a product that you can stand behind and be proud of. So that's what it's about to me. Yeah. So um, what five songs describes your like your personality like off your iPod or like in general you just listen to? Uh, five songs. Um, I say um, you know some big crit like you know meditate. You know, because I like this. I spend a lot of time by myself, you know, whenever I'm not around, you know, my team and we take care of business. I, I, I spend a lot of time by myself and I do a lot of thinking. So I say meditate. Um, I say, um, that's a tough one, man. Out of all the questions I've ever been asked, that's probably the one that got me stumped. 
Uh, man, J. Cole, uh, can I holler at you? Uh, you know, really, J. Cole, Born Center, you know, that's, it's self-explanatory. Um, you know, uh, Jeezy and Jay-Z, seen it all. Um, and, uh, Liz Khalifa, you know, with them boys. Because, you know, I just feel like my team with them boys, team just don't know it yet. So. Yeah. So, um, this is, like, a general music question. Like, the Dirty, do you think, like, the Dirty South is taking, like, pretty much, like, took over the sound, like, over West Coast, East Coast, uh, West? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's taking over, but the Dirty South has become influential in music from each coast, you know, from the, the East Coast to the West Coast. Daddy South, you know, style and sound is influential in their music, you know, and I feel like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say we've taken over, but we definitely have, you know, our handprint in the game, so. So, um, I know we talked about Detroit a little bit, but what stories can you, like, not giving like two months away. Like, what story like would you like is like the highlight of this album? Um, the highlight. I feel like the highlight of the album is the intro. The intro. Um. Yeah. You know. Um. I feel like it. It'll, it's gonna resonate just as well as the on the dream of the nightmare as the intro that Meek Mill had. You know, like you feel that emotion. You feel that pain. You feel that struggle. You know, and then not only that. It's telling you the story from when he went from, you know, rags to riches. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and anybody that's a soldier of the same struggle, you can feel that. So anybody who want to know me, you know what I'm saying, for me, when you put all this other stuff to the side, that intro going to tell you everything that you want to know. And I feel like the intro is going to be the determining factor whether a person lets it go to number two or they'll take it out. So, and I'm confident that by listening to my intro, people are gonna listen to all 18, 19 tracks that's on the on the album. Uh, when is the detour supposed to come out, or it can, you can't dispel? Yeah, that's um, you know, I, I can't provide that information right now. We're still kind of battling with the you know the release date. Um, but I do have us. Uh, I'm gonna do a surprise leak uh, here within the next month or two, you know, um, probably do like a six, seven song EP, um, and we'll do a digital release, so you can be on the lookout for that, and then I also have a mixtape already done, which is called The Setback, so that will, you know, release shortly after the EP, so, you know, I got some stuff to, to be on the lookout for, you know. Just to tease some stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, so we're working. Okay, so, um, like, Okay, so what do you think the top ten art artists from the Dirty South is like? Name your top to you. Who are your top ten? Top ten from the Dirty South. Um, I have to say Scarface, Outkast, um, Ti, Vio, um, UGK. SGC, that's the school of click out of Houston, Texas. So anybody, uh, you know, those of you who don't know, uh, let's see who else. Man, there's so many, so many people. Uh, Big Hawk, Big Pocky, and Big Mo. I'm not gonna lie, everybody from the H, because you know, like Houston influences has a big influence on the sound of music today, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot of heavy hitters that came out of Texas. But, um, thanks again for doing this interview, sitting down with us, and taking your time to, um, talk about D Detour. Uh, no problem, man. I appreciate y'all for having me. Um, for those of you who are in tune with the social networks, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, at official K Mitch, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, K Mitch seven one three. You know what I'm saying? We got the SoundCloud, SoundCloud.com backslash K Mitch. 
Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com backslash Kniche Nation. You know, uh, we also have a, uh, our own website as well, uh, com, and that's W-A-V-D-O-W-N records.com. So go on there and you can get all the latest music, you know, news, pictures, blogs, anything they got to do with Kniche and Lay Down Records, you can go on there and get it, so. Thanks again. This was, um, you are listening to WWSU 106.9, Fairboard Dayton, Dates for Toys. This was your race date. You was listening with DJ Quest. Yes, man, we rock. Let's get it. This is WWSU 106.9. You are now tuned in to your race date on WWSU 106.9, Fairboard Dayton. You are listening to WWSU 106.9, Fairboard Dayton, Dayton's Red Choice. You are listening to Your Right State with DJ Quest. And on the phone, I have, on the phone, on the phone, I have the lovely Callie Miles. What up? Not much. So I got to ask, since you're from Cleveland, are you a Browns fan? Um, of course I am. <laughs> I'm, not too, I'm, too, I'm not too much into organized sports, but, um, you know, I support anything that makes Cleveland people happy. We go through we go through a lot in Cleveland, so whatever makes everybody else happy, I'm cool with. I'm not too much into sports, though. I love to play sports, but watching them, not so much. Not so much. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was reading up on you. Um, I've, you have like an interesting career. The one that kind of stuck out the most before we get into the music is you switched to vegan. Yeah. Like, how how hard? Because to me, I f- would find that hard because I love meat. Like I don't think I could get ri- like get rid of mm-hmm. it. So how hard was well, it to like switch to a vegan? Um, I love meat too. I would eat meat with every single meal. And honestly, even now that I'm vegan, I still feel like I eat meat with every single meal. I'm just not eating the meat from an animal. I'm eating meat that's made from plant based foods. So I don't feel like I'm going without anything now. Um. And the reason that we went vegan, my fiance and I both did, about, it'll be four years, I think, in October, um, we saw the documentary Forks Over Knives, which basically just brings up a lot of the, you know, we saw a lot of the health issues that our parents had, you know, getting diabetes and having open heart surgery and a lot of these things that a lot of people are going through and we just thought, you know, we don't want that. We want to be healthy. And so we just immediately went vegan. Um cold turkey and it was a little bit harder for him um at first because he's not always you know he would be out at business meetings and things like that and figuring out what to order when you're at restaurants can be difficult but um if you if you cook and if you can cook then it is easy you just kind of have to change your way of thinking and make sure you read the back of every everything that you're eating which you just kind of have to retrain your habits but i can tell you that i eat better than i did before and i'm so much more satisfied food than I ever was before so you should try it <laughs> awesome so um you did uh, recently release your single sugar what was um yes. kind of like the inspiration from the sound of it um well you know it's kind of got a little bit of a throwback sound uh I listened to a lot of salt and pepper growing up and uh, a lot of people when it comes on they're like oh this is you they don't really even realize it's me at first um but I love the song. It's such a it's such, that's such a nice summery, you know, kind of summer love type of vibe, and uh, that's kind of just what we did with it. And it's featuring my fiance Bobby Champagne, also a reggae uh, artist, Gemini, and um, Danny Wells, who's on the hook, and produced by Young Up. And uh, we did the video with the guys from High Art. You guys can check out the video for Sugar on YouTube, and uh, it's a really fun summer vibe video. Like I said, you like the song. Yes, I actually was. I was just like listening to it, like feeling the vibe of. I like the um, instrumental for it. Like it's really like it thinks of the throwback. On yeah, the it's a Curtis. Yeah, really like it. it's a Curtis Mayfield sample from Young Thug. I was wondering if it like sounded familiar. Mhm. But um, one of the questions I want to get into like, what was your like inspirations? Like you knew this was you knew you was going to do music for sure or do something with the music industry, like, what was, like, the moment you knew you was going to do it? Um, 
I pretty much have known all my life. I started writing songs when I was nine years old, and it's really been my number one all the time. But, you know, as you probably know, being in the music business, especially being an artist, it can be really expensive. So it, it's hard It's hard to maintain. You have to invest a lot of money into yourself and into your craft. And, um, you know, it can be difficult at times. So you got to really, really love it to keep at it. And there's a lot of different things in, you know, in the entertainment business that I'm interested in, like a lot of different artists. You know, I act and, you know, I've modeled a little bit, but... It's always come back to the music. That's always been my number one. And um, when you're talking about different uh, forms of industry, like I noticed that you like looking up new talent. Is that like something you like develop um, through the years, or did it like this one day you like want to promote other artists? Um, it's kind of something I've always been doing. Like I said, I started writing songs when I was nine, and I also started my first girl group when I was nine. So I did that, and then I also started, like, um, another girl group when I was 18. I was kind of always searching for like-minded individuals because I felt like I felt very different and kind of separated from everyone growing up just because I really had such a strong belief that, that I could do this for a living and you know a lot of people don't want to hear that when you're growing up in a small town like kind of who does she think she is you know type of thing but you know when it when it's something that you're really passionate about so I was kind of always just searching for other people like me to work with and I've never been like a hater or a jealous type of person so for me when I see people that are interested in the same thing especially females I always see them as allies and, instead of competition and I've always wanted to, to work with them. So, um, you know, starting my business and, and starting the Bomb Squad, kind of, it was just really natural. And I love being able to give other people opportunities and also just pass down a lot of the stuff that I've learned because a lot of times you, learn, you have to go through things and learn it the hard way. And it's nice to be able to help other people kind of skip those steps. What was, advice-wise, what do you think, what do you wish somebody would have told you, like, earlier when you first started out? Uh, to be a DJ. <laughs> to be a DJ. To become a DJ, definitely, which I still want to do and a producer, but I feel like as a, as a singer, unless you're doing acoustic shows or something like that, there's really no way to make income until you're, like, pop star, Katy Perry status. I mean, even Gaga went broke, so it's just, there's so much involved with the business of it. The clubs always need a DJ, and if you know how to produce and you know how to DJ, then you can make your own records and you can play your own records, and that's really, really like, that it would be the smartest thing for anybody that wants to be an artist to do, I think, is be a DJ first, because you can make money and, and play your own stuff. Yeah. So, um, this is a general music question, like, do you feel like the Midwest music was somewhat influenced by either more of the East Coast, the South, or the um, West Coast? Um, that's an interesting question. I mean, I don't know if you can really generalize like that. I think everybody's inspired by different things, but like the overall sound, I would, I would think a little bit more East Coast because, I mean, the weather and stuff on the West Coast, just everything is so laid back over there, and... I strive for that kind of sound. I love that sound. But I know when I go to the West Coast, I feel a lot, I feel a lot more urban and, like, harder than a lot of the people out there. Just I feel like Cleveland is definitely more of a kind of East Coast kind of, kind of sound, at least for Cleveland. I'm just speaking for Cleveland. It's a little darker. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. so, it's not so laid back. It's a little bit more, more serious. Like, kind of more, like, like more realistic yeah. stories or yeah like like realistic stories and even just the tracks too that I always get from producers they just kind of have this like this sound like it's raining outside and you know it's just kind of a little bit of a darker type of sound than like if the sun were always shining and we were just like watching the uh, sitting on the beach watching the waves crash type of thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um I know you've talked about one of your influences was salt and pepper like, do you have, like, mm -hmm. the top ten of female artists back then that, um, are more, inf that, um, you were more influenced by, or? 
Yeah, I mean, a, a, a lot of artists. Um, I was a huge Whitney Houston fan growing up. I remember singing The Greatest Love of All when I was, like, five years old to, like, all my neighbors. And um, Mariah Carey was another one. Like, I, I loved singing all of their songs when I was younger. Um, I was also a huge Madonna fan. I'm actually going to be covering a couple of Madonna songs and putting those out soon. And uh, I was a big Aaliyah fan. I love, love, love Aaliyah. And uh, her music is still so relevant and, and so beautiful. And um, let's see, who else? I also listen to a lot of people kind of like Linda Ronstadt and, you know, older music as well. Okay. So, um, do, do, do. Uh, name five songs on your iPod right now that describes your personality. Oh man, um, I don't listen to a ton of the music that that is out like on the radio, which people might be familiar with right now. But one of the artists that I do really like is The Weeknd because his stuff is just like really sexy and raw. So um, I would say like The Weeknd High for this is a song that I really like. I'm also, um, I really love Macklemore, Thrift Shop. Like, you can put on that song at any time, and I just love that beat, and it's, it's really funny, and I also like to incorporate comedy into my music with songs like Yo Mama Got Beef. <laughs> and um, so, so I love Macklemore, Thrift Shop. Anything that's, that's kind of, like, light and funny, but, you know, well-written at the same time, I really like. Um, I also listen to a lot of Ina, who is a Romanian pop star, and, uh, like, her song, In Your Eyes, is one of my favorite songs. Um, I listen to Adventure Club and pretty much any of their music. I really like a lot. That's, That's cool. like, all I can say to kind of think about. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there has been, like, a lot of artists coming out of Cleveland or begin to, like, start big buzz around Cleveland. Where do you think, like, the music in Cleveland is going, like, from your standpoint? Like, you've been in the industry for a while. Well, from my standpoint, it's going in um, a very positive direction. Um, we are kind of, like, I have a hip-hop group with my fiancé, Bobby Champagne, and um, Rick Stickman, and, you know, a few of our other bombshells. And um, we're called The Floor Learners. And we're on just a very, like, positive, uplifting, kind of motivated music type of vibe right now. So... It's all about the message for us. So personally, like, I don't listen to music unless it has a good message. I just don't really see what the point is in putting anything out if it's not talking about something good. Um, I've been reading a lot and learning a lot this summer and just learning about the importance of affirmations and auto-suggestion and, and what you say, you, you become. So I feel like what you put in your music and you repeat over and over to yourself, and people repeat over and over to themselves, shape their environment. And so I just think it's really important that we're putting out positive messages that people aren't repeating things that keep them oppressed. So to me, the people that I'm surrounded by and kind of our movement in Cleveland, it's just moving in like a really positive direction, and you can't really... You can only, like, fight, you know, there's so many things in the world, you can only you can only fight, like, the pain and hate and stuff like that with love. You can only win with love. So that's kind of what we're all about. Okay. And if that's not too cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, do you, so even with today, like, we have Nicki Minaj, Diddy Zelia, and Diddy Sky MC, do you feel like there's still, like, a gap between female artists in the industry but towards the male um, artists? Um, I love that we're seeing a lot more female artists. I just wish that their message was better because I feel like, I mean, even J-Lo coming out with her latest video with Iggy Azalea, I mean, I just think it's ridiculous for someone like J-Lo that's so established and so powerful to be kind of lowering herself to the antics of, you know, young girls just starting out in the industry. I don't think that, um, the language that she uses is very respectful. I don't think that the videos are. Um, I think that they're all very talented. I just wish that, I just think it's time for someone to stand up that is a woman and just be like, listen, like, stop calling each other bitches, stop calling yourself that. Like, we need, 
we're stronger than that. We don't need to always be on a stripper pole. We don't need to be getting booty injections. We can just be talented. Like, I just want someone to stand up and say that, and if I have to be the first person to do it, then I'm cool with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be cool with it, too. <laughs> Good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I really want to know more of, like, how did the Bomb Squad and the Bomb Squad radio came about? Um, well, uh, well, the Bomb Squad, first of all, kind of just happened organically, like I said. Um, we started, my fiance and Bobby Champagne, we started throwing some parties in Cleveland and just started noticing a lot of, of beautiful and uh, talented young women around us. And, you know, I've been in, in the industry for a while, so... It was just my nature to, to want to help them and just kind of like show them the ropes. And then it eventually turned into, you know, a business and, and sort of a mentoring program. And, you know, we just really stand for, um, you know, females working together and female empowerment. And um, it's really grown into something that we can be really proud of. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, right now, we, we just we keep doing searches and auditions. So if anyone out there is listening and they're interested in being a part of the squad, um, you can go to cali-miles.com and sign up for the next audition. And, I mean, we've got girls on the squad that, you know, it's not all about modeling. A lot of the, some of the girls are models, but some are actresses. A lot of them are artists. We just got a couple really good artists. Um, shout out to Christina Smeary and uh, Courtney from Jay Courtney. Uh, there's two really great artists that we just got on the squad, and I'm really excited to start working on some music with them. But, um, you know, when you're a female in the business, if anyone needs support, I, I would think it's the females, you know, and that's kind of why we started it, because there were so many times that I was the only female at a show, and it is so much easier to make it in this industry, or even to do anything, if you've got a, a team of girls that got your back. You know, you might be able to make it by yourself, but... It's a lot easier if you've got a whole squad of girls that, that have your back that you can work with. So, on um, Bomb Squad Radio, um, if you ask about, yeah, um, Voice of Radio reached out to us. Another shout out to my boy Errol Porter, and uh, we've got a show on Fridays from seven to eight p.m. And it's really, it's really cool to have the radio show. I mean, we can play a lot of our music. If other artists want to send in their music, we can play their music. You can just send it to Kelly. MilesMusic at gmail.com and uh, we'll review it and get it on there and uh, we're just all about talking about, you know, issues that women go through in, in the business or just, you know, in everyday life as well as, you know, trends and nightlife events and fashion and all that good stuff. Awesome. But, um, I don't know why that question flew up my head, but um, I see that you perform like opened up for um busy bone one to um thugs and harmony bone thugs and harmony i don't know why i can't say mm -hmm. that out. what was that <laughs> what was that like 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 two um, it was it was it was really really awesome um i actually am originally from minnesota i only lived there until i was five but i have a lot of my family that still lives there and so we got, i got to open up for him for some shows in minnesota and in wisconsin so my sister, who lives out there, actually got to come with me and see me, and um, it was a really great experience. It was cool to be able to play, you know, in front of those crowds, and they showed me a lot of love. You know, it's it's always crazy when you're in your hometown. A lot of times, a lot of people say this, is you feel like everybody is kind of fighting against you, and then when you finally step out and get out of town, like, people kind of, you know, people really yeah. show you or really show you a lot of love, and... I can definitely say that, uh, that that's how it was. It was a great experience, and I'm a big fan. I actually want to cover a Bone song soon, so you yeah. might have to do like a little vote on which song people want to hear me cover. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you have like a crazy story, like where you was like performing this fan did such and such, or actually, um, yeah, when I was performing opening up for Vivi, um. A girl just told her, I don't know how she got onto the stage because the stage was literally like at their, their heads, like at their height. Somehow this girl climbed up on the stage, like over the speaker, and just started like grinding all over me while oh. I was singing. And I'm trying to kind of like, you know, I'm trying to perform, so I'm trying to kind of 
play it off, you know, and, and dance with her, but it's like, I also kind of want someone to get it off me, but I don't want to, like, be rude, or, you know, so it was kind of, like, a really awkward situation, <laughs> I think, finally somebody came and got her off the stage, but, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen when, when you're live, so, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> that's funny. Um, before you go, what would you give art advice to any artist, male or female, what advice would you give them if they're like just starting out or? Um, I, I would just say like surround yourself with, with, you know, like-minded people. Just surround yourself with people that you want to be like. It can be hard sometimes. I know a lot of, a, a lot of people are in situations where they have to work so many hours and, and the job that they're working at is with, you know, not really with the most positive people around them, but everybody's in a different place in their life, so um, I, I would just say to really try, if, if you want to be like somebody, just try to spend as much time as you can with people like that, and even as far as the people you follow on Instagram. If you're following people on Instagram that are posting negative negative stuff or and stuff that you don't want to be like, unfollow them. Like, I only follow people on Instagram that, that I can look up to, that I want to be like. I just try to really surround myself with, with positive people and people that I want to be more like. If you can't be friends with them, at least follow them <laughs> and just, you know, check out what they're doing. That's the beauty of the internet and everything now, but you can really just see what everyone's doing on a day-to-day basis and, and that's a good way to stay motivated. Well, again, um, thank you for doing this interview with us. Uh, um, do you have any like places where the audience could go check out your music and whatnot, like social media? Yes. Yeah, for sure. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Callie Miles. It's C-A-L-I-M-I-L-E-S. My website is Callie-Miles.com, where you can book me or any of the Bomb Squad members or learn more about us or sign up to join the Bomb Squad. Um, my SoundCloud is soundcloud.com backslash kelly-miles. And um, there's a few new track remix, there's a new track remix of Yo Mama Got Beef I want everyone to check out by Mere Picks. You guys can find that link on my Twitter. Um, make sure you check out the Sugar music video and my Chasing the Night music video, which also just came out. Okay. Thank you for um, the interview, and thank you for everybody for tuning in to pre- um, pre-record show again. You are listening to WWSU 106.9 Fairborn Dayton. Thanks for right towards you was li- listening with DJ Quiz, and you was listening to K Mitch and Kelly Miles. Thank you. Thank. You. All right. Bye. Bye. This is WWSG 106.9. You are now tuned in to your right state on WWSG 106.9. Fairborn Dayton.